Hey guys, Mike here from Ball and Bowers, and today I'm going to be doing a short um, reptile room update and just uh, basically just give you guys an update on what's going on and uh, what we got going on here. And uh, right now it's pretty hot today and muggy out here. Um, right now the ambient temperature in the reptile room is 87.6. So that's ambient temperature in the room here, guys. So it's really, really hot. That's why I have a lot of the lights shut down today on a lot of the enclosures. Um, I just turned some of the lights on for you guys like this one and those two on the top I had them shut off before the video But I'm um, just to keep the room cool as possible. So but we'll start up here and um, up here is the uh, the Nicaraguan uh, motley female it's in the water cooling off and uh, in here we have the last breeding pair of the season But I think they're all done. It's the male Nicaraguan and Helen the hypo I haven't seen any interest in either of them, have shown no interest in breeding um, in probably about three weeks now, maybe longer, maybe four weeks. So it's probably safe to say that they're all done and I'll probably separate them uh, within a week or two and uh, they'll be done for the season. And then we have the gravid Nicaraguan girl in her hide in there. Can't really get a good look at her, but she is right in there. She's really, really dark. Let's see if we can get a, a look at her through here. Yep, there's her head right there. You can't really see it because she's so dark. But she's due in um, 18 days. And she's right in here in this hide. And giving an update on Donnie. Oh, looks like we interrupted Donnie. He was feeding out of his bowl right there. Eating his greens and his iguana food mix. And this is uh, Donnie the rescued green iguana. And I picked up Donnie um, about a week ago now, and I got him from a, a wonderful girl in Salem, Massachusetts. And um, yeah, guys, so, uh, you know, he's doing really well. He's eating his food. And um, yeah, so I'm going to be keeping him. I will not be trying to find him a home or trying to rehome or sell him. I'm going to keep him for the long haul. He's a beautiful, beautiful... Um, I think he's a male. I'm not too sure. I haven't sexed him yet. Um, she told me he was a male, so uh, I've been giving him a little time to just, you know, kind of get used to his new enclosure. And he does have a missing toe on his foot over here on the back foot. I've been treating it and uh, with some antibiotic ointment. And it was already kind of on the mend on the heel uh, when I got him. But I'm still treating it because it does look like it needs a little bit of moisture and uh, maybe some antibiotic ointment. It's not going to hurt it. So I have been putting a, lot, uh, a little bit of that on daily with a Q-tip. And uh, he seems to uh, like it. You know, it seems like it's helping him a little bit and uh, it's making it heal up a little faster. So that's always good. And then I just added this uh, big log I had outside. I had it cut down a couple years ago in the backyard. So I took it, I took it in. I put it in the shower under steaming hot water for about a half hour. Then I baked it in the oven at 350 for about 20 minutes. Well, not 12, I wouldn't say 20 minutes, more like 10 or 12 minutes. And um, it wouldn't really fit, so the oven door was kind of open about an inch or two, but still got really hot. It was almost, you can kind of smell it <laughs> to the point where it smelled like, you know, like it was almost cooking in there. But it was, you know, I had to make sure that I got um, any any parasites or insects from outside um, a lot of people would just think that putting it in the water would be good enough um, if you run it under steam and hot water for 20 minutes but you always want to put it at least in the um, if you can fit it in your oven at at least like say 300 three maybe 325 350 depending on the size of the log um, and let it heat up for at least seven to ten minutes just to you know really kill anything so this is where Donnie lives he has um, a little cave under here where he can go Sometimes he goes down there at night and um, he has some iguana mix and then he has a water bowl down there and Up here. He just has some sticks and vines to climb on and I need to get him a bigger log like this That goes all the way to the top. That's what I really want to do and um, he usually hangs out right up here and um, Eats out of his bowl up here. He never really I was putting greens down there But they were just going to waste and drying so I just leave the greens up here now and he seems to eat up here and hang out and um, up here I have a LED UVB bulb in here and then in here I have a, um, a 60 watt heat bulb and that's why I have it shut off right now because it's really hot it's 87.4 ambient in the room right now so it's really hot here even with the windows open and a small fan on so right now we just have the UVB LED bulb because it doesn't give off uh, a lot of heat going 
So uh, he's under that hanging out. So um, yeah, he's doing great, guys. So that's really good that he's doing great. And I'm just trying to close this enclosure. There we go. And I'm really happy that he is doing good. He is a really, really uh, good boy. And he eats his greens every day. Good to eat your vegetables. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he's a good guy, and um, I'm going to be keeping him for the long haul. So he's just going to be a new addition here at Ball and Bowers. I couldn't see just giving him up to anybody. All right, guys, up oh, that one's going back in the hide. And that's the male that's going back into the hide. I hope he's coming out that end now. And then over here, guys, we have, um, we have Storm. And Storm's looking really good lately, guys. Look at all the orange underneath her... Um, on, on her basically her chin or underneath her neck right there and uh you know it just was there was no orange when i got her she was really like a pale brown color and she's getting a lot of orange on her tail um if you can kind of see that right there on her tail she's getting color and that's really really cool right there on her legs a little bit on her sides and you can really see it right there on the side and a lot underneath right there her colors are just really starting to come in. Look at the fat pot belly on her. She's not too big, you know, as you see. She's, she's just a, you know, a really healthy, um, well-fed, a diverse diet. And she's just a really, really good girl. And uh, today she got her, um, her 15 super worms and, of course, her daily fresh greens. And I only get Massachusetts grown green, guys. Only from Massachusetts grown. And if you wait a second, I'll go get them in the other room. Hold on. Okay, guys, we're back. And now this is what I get right here. And this is right here. Massachusetts grown. Pesticide free herbicide free fungicide free local they're really fresh um no chlorine baths i mean this is just the freshest uh green uh you know lettuce you can get guys it comes in these really uh you know airtight containers and um it's just locally grown so you really get it at its fresh and like i said guys pesticide free herbicide free fungicide free no chlorine baths i mean basically this stuff is just grown all natural probably rinsed off with some water and um thrown up in here and there you go so she gets fresh greens grown locally now these greens are only grown about 30 minutes from my house which is cool and um that's awesome that they're literally grown only about 30 maybe 40 minutes with some traffic from my house so this is what i feed um donnie the rescued green iguana and this is what storm gets when uh, they get their baby crispy green leaf and um, they really enjoy it and it's really fresh all the time so uh, they really like that guys and it's awesome that i support the local community and the local growers because that's all i'll buy for them unless they, the store does not have it and sometimes i will even go down the street to the different store to see if that store has it because that's just the stuff i love to buy and i love to support the local growers nothing like su uh, supporting your community guys but again, here's Stormy, we'll look at her one more time. Hey Stormy, what's going on girl? Hey girl. Oh, I love you girl. All right, so we'll let her be. And uh, sometimes I'll catch her back there in her big, uh, her big pool back there. She'll just sit there and uh, soak. And then in here we have the uh, male Cal Albino. He's in there in the cold hide. And this is his warm side hide right here. And then down here we have, um, where are they? See if we can find one, guys. Oh, they're both, they're back there. You can see one of the heads. Let's see. There's one right there. Yep, you can kind of see the eye right through the leaf right there, guys. And there's two um, Bahamian anoles in here. And we'll see if we can get a better look at them if I raise this. Yep, there's one right there. So we got two Bahamian anoles in here. I do not know if they're male or female. Um, just know that we have two Bahamian anoles in here and down here. I have my two small uh, red-haired sliders and uh, They I haven't named them so they don't really have names my other two turtles their name is Tom and Jerry And then I'm gonna be upgrading them soon too They're gonna be going into a 20 long like this right here because he's gonna be getting upgraded too soon so um, I'd like to get him an enclosure like this um, in the future, so when I do that, uh, the turtles will be going into this 20 long right here, and I'm looking to get him something uh, this summer 
hopefully by July or August, we'll be upgrading Stormy and um, upgrading the uh, little right-handed sliders into this bigger uh, tank right there, guys. And um, right here we got Bernie. Bernie the berm. And actually, I got to put his hide back in because I just cleaned it. So I got his hide right here. And his hide usually goes in on this side. But that's Bernie the berm. And as right now, you see he has a simple setup. And Bernie's in the mix of getting him an enclosure upgrade. Right now, I'm uh, saving for one. I was going to build him one. But I think I'm just going to invest and buy him a professional one. And the one I'm looking at is a little over $300. It's six by two and a half, and it's two feet tall. So it's six feet long, um, two and a half feet wide, and two feet tall. Uh, it's a really, really nice enclosure. So I am in the midst of saving to buy that. And it's going to be a well deserved upgrade for Bernie because he is getting pretty big, guys. And then we have Dottie up here, who has a big, huge lump in her right here from eating her first rabbit. And she had her first rabbit yesterday, and it was about a two-pound rabbit. And she took it down pretty easy, guys. So it was pretty cool that she uh, took that down. And she's over here on the cold side, too. She's just totally leaving the hot side alone. And like I said, I had um, the lights shut off in the enclosures to keep the heat down in the room because it's really hot in here even though the day's starting to wind down into night here it's still hot earlier today at uh three o'clock this afternoon it was 91 here so i'm gonna have to pop the ac in the other room what i do is this is my living room per se right here in my house so my kitchen is through those doors so i i have an ac in the kitchen and I don't use it in this room. What I'll do is I'll put it on in the kitchen in the summertime. And I'll put a fan in the doorway right here. And just the fan from the AC in the other room clicking in some cool air. It keeps it cool enough in this room where it keeps it in the 70s. And that's where I like it to be. You know, you don't want it too cold. You don't want to put an AC right there in that window and have cold air pumping out all the time in the room. You know, that just be a little too cold. What I have, what I do is I have the AC in the, um, in the kitchen. Put the fan right there on the doorway it blows in that cold air and it keeps this room nice and cool during the um just cool enough cool enough where it's comfortable guys that's what you want you don't want it too cool on your um on your reptiles so yep there's bernie and uh he's always looking for a male right now bernie's only taking live i do have a frozen rabbit for him also in the um in the freezer so we're going to try to get him to eat that in the oncoming days and when when we try that we'll uh, also make sure to get that on video and down here we also have the light shut off and right here they don't have much of a heat lamp or anything they just have this strip light right here they have a heat pad um, under this enclosure right here and this is my uh, female possible super hypo and she has a very very reduced pattern and she's the one that slugged out um, in late March this season she had 13 slugs and one stillborn but she's doing really good now she's feeding really well she's putting back on her weight and we're going to try her again this season, guys. So that's going to be really, really cool. And we're going to be pairing her with a um, Hypo Jungle. That's possible Heck Cal Albino. And down here, guys, you guys know this is um, Empress. She's one of my gravid females. And Empress is due now, guys, on my clock in 16 days. So 16 days, guys. I mean, could be 15, could be 17, 18. But on my clock, guys, I got it down for 16 days, guys. And we're all ready. The other day while she was kind of over there, I um, I got a chance to get in there and, and kind of put this piece of cardboard that you see in here. I cut all the sides off, only left the back side on. So a lot of this is cardboard right underneath. So if she does have the babies right there, it'll be easy to kind of pick up the goo and, you know, clean up the tank pretty easy. And um, yeah, guys, so we're going to give you guys um, constant updates. Um, when basically when she's in her last 48 hours and when I start to see some contractions I'll uh, give you guys updates and we're gonna see if we can get a little bit of um, the birth on film guys of a live birth from her that'll be really awesome all right guys well down here we got um, some of the uh, some of my geckos and that's one of my um, albinos right here and this is um, my bold right here and I'm gonna be trading him out I'm gonna be trading him for a uh, bell albino this coming Sunday and I also have a few other this my another small albino that's in that hide right there and then I have a breeding pair in here guys and that is the male right there what you're looking at Let's see if we can get a better look yep that's the male up oh, and there's the female in that corner 
All right, guys. You know, and that's a, so that's a breeding pair I got going. I got two uh, two breeding pairs going, and this is another one of my male breeders. He's a really really good looking guy right here. He'll be breeding for me soon. And in here, this is one of the rescues, guys. When I got a couple rescues last month, or well, a little over a month ago. And as you see, guys, all that's left from um, him is the little spot right there you see on his tail. Right there. You can see where there used to be a bad cut, but it, basically it's all healed up. And I'd say one more, um, one more shed, one or two more sheds, it'll be all set. And as you see, guys, up in the uh, not too dirty yet. I'll probably clean it in a day or two. And you see he's feeding on mealworms, usually in here. I put a dozen mealworms in there today and some crickets. And uh, we still got a few crickets left. But um, he's doing great, guys. All right. And in here, we have another one of the male breeders. And this is the um, patternless hypo tangerine. And he's a finicky eater, this guy. Some days he loves crickets. Some days he doesn't want nothing to do with them. Some days he loves mealworms. Some days he doesn't want nothing to do with them. Like today, he had a dozen mealworms in there, and he ate them down. So he loved mealworms today. Oh, that's an empty one. Because the male is actually in here breeding. That's why that's empty. He's actually in here with the female. And there we go, guys. And this is my male right here. And the albino is right back there, the female. And so that's the second breeding pair I have. And these are some of my small holdbacks. And also, um, a couple of these are going to be going, going to be getting shipped out to um, TJ at TJ's Reptiles as a gift from uh, me here at Ball and Boas. And so, let me show you. So, this one is mine. And these two are TJ's. So that's TJ's and that one is for TJ. So TJ wanted a male and female pair and I'm pretty sure that this is a female and that is a male. And uh, oh no, I'm sorry, the other way around. This is a female and cause don't have me, yeah, that's a female and that's a male. And um, I'm pretty sure, well, hopefully we're gonna be shipping these two out next week to him. We'll just make sure the weather's good. We want the weather to be right around uh, mid to high 70s. That way it doesn't really, uh, it, obviously it wouldn't need a heat pack and it wouldn't really need a cold pack. Anything over 85, 86, I, I'd, I'd like to include um, a cold pack. And anything under, I'd say anything under 70, 72, you might want to include a, um, a heat pack. But I'm looking to ship right when it's around between 74 and say 81 on both ends. Because it would be going from Boston so Boston, Massachusetts to um, where he lives. So I won't say where that is, but um, it's a, you know, a pretty good distance away. So yeah, guys, so um, like I said, so one of these is my uh, whole back and the other two are for him. And a bunch of my other whole backs are in here. And then like I said, I got the two breeding pairs and my other males going on in here. And this is the other rescue in here. Oh, and there he is. And he's doing really well, guys. The big, the big gash that was behind one of his front legs is totally healed. And uh, his tail, as you see, is starting to grow back. And he's starting to eat all the time. He's put his weight back on. He's not looking skinny like a pencil anymore. So that's awesome. And he's due for a cleaning. Got some poopies in there. But as you see, he gets mealworms in here. And he got a dozen mealworms today and um, a dozen crickets. And there's maybe a couple crickets left, but he basically mowed them all down. And this one still has some mealworms. And there it is. And this one right here was um, developing maybe like uh, what you want to call MBD, meta yeah, MB and metabolic bone disease. As you can see, it's it just started to um, start to use its front legs again. I seen it not using its front legs because um, I, I guess it wasn't getting enough calcium. So. Um, I started giving it up more calcium in the diet, started putting calcium in a bowl like this so that it can go up and just lick the calcium. I all, all, uh, started putting calcium in the bowl with the mealworms and also started shaking the crickets a lot more with the calcium 
and I see it's starting to use its front legs now. So um, hopefully, because sometimes you can, if it's just in the really beginning, you can kind of reverse it a little bit and get it stronger again. And then sometimes the, their legs will never go back to the way they were. So this one in the last three or four days has started to use its front legs already, just for three days of calcium. So we're hoping in another week or two, it'll be, um, you know, it'll be back to back to full health, guys. So. So that's really, really um, something we're going to have to watch and keep an eye on. And um, basically I called my vet and, and told her what it was and sent her a small clip. And she basically just told me to up the diet and uh, see if it gets better. I mean, up the calcium in the diet and see if, um, you know, it gets better. And, and it has on its own because if it didn't, I was going to have to bring, I was going to have to bring him in for a visit. Um, but luckily he's uh, taken to the calcium really well and already like I said using his um his front legs again Because he was starting to drag them just a slight bit and I noticed it and I got really really worried And here's one of the golden geckos And I have a pair of golden geckos in here and that's one of them and the other one never comes out at during the day It's in its uh, little rock cave right there. There's a couple holes in these rocks and it lives in there and this one usually hangs out in that cave. And as you see, we'll give you another look at this one. But that's the pair of golden geckos, guys. All right, and then we'll turn this on to give you a look at the um, the Cuban night and all. And as you can see, he looks he looks really really hot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the mister here, the spray bottle, and we're gonna mist him down. And we'll give these ones a mist. And we'll go over here, guys. And we'll give these ones a mist. That goes out every time I spray it. It's a LED touch light. And it's so sensitive. One little droplet of water. And the thing goes up. It's crazy. Literally a drop of the water touching it. It's so sensitive. It's a touch. It's a touch light. So you touch it and it goes up. Touch it goes on. See? One, one drop of the water shuts it off. It's, it's crazy. So but it's Donnie. We'll give him a little bit more of a spray. All right. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much anything I got going on right now. Um, like I said, we're just waiting on these two females to drop, and we got a couple of pairings going on um, with the leopard geckos, and we got the um, blue-tailed skink up here. And actually, I have his nightlight on right now, and he's due for a cleaning, so he's never out during the day. Never, never, never. Um, so I actually have to clean his enclosure in the next few days. So when I do clean his enclosure and I finally get him out of there I'm gonna do a video on him to see how much he's grown since I've got him and um, Well guys Let's see if this I forgot anything. Well, we'll show you the fish before I go. And this is my little fish tank right here And as you can see how much water how hot it is I filled this yesterday and this is how much evaporation in about 30 hours guys 36 hours Already about a half an inch of water out of this tank. But this is my goldfish tank, and I have one neon terror down there at the bottom. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Look, this is Mike from Ball and Bowlers saying until the next time, peace.